there's a bit of general maintenance needed this week. So um, the trains are actually not operating, the railway is closed for maintenance. But I'm just going to show you me taking it to bits and doing what needs to be done. Hope it's interesting. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is take out the bridge. So, well, I hope you can see what I'm doing. We will just unhook those wires like that. Okay. And this end. And four screws. Here we go. Stage one complete. The next bit to come out is the TMD section. So let's uh, undo the electrics first. Tina is. Two screws. Well, the big one now is the freight yard. So we have another screw here. Well, you can see I've had to dismantle the fences here and pull a bit of this of track. This bit of track has had to come out of there. There's a plug in the corner here. Just undo that. There's a whole lot of electric stuff under here which you probably can't see. Oh, there we go. Turn the light on. Um, disconnect. 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 Uh -oh, more of it. Disconnect. 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 Okay. Well, the freight yard's gone. You didn't see the hard bit, which was me lifting it out. It's pretty heavy with all that polyfiller where the freight liner crane goes. So now for this section of the upper level, we've got some electrical plugs here which I've already disconnected so there's a couple of screws at the other end so there are now three screws which we need to undo container is Right. Um, any more electrics? Oh yeah, one more electric over there. Mm. 
This is the one that caused all the derailments at the start. All right. Ah. Here we go. Well, the last bit I'm going to take out is this bit here. And to do that, just a little bit of catenary to undo. Just going to lift up the viaduct just a bit, prop that underneath. So, um, now I could be able just to move this sideways. Okay, so the last section has been moved. Now I can get at the bit of track I want to. It's this one, this double diamond crossing. Um, so before that I need to just remove a bit of solder. So these drop of wires here need to be released. There we go. Well I've managed to pull that rail up without um, having to remove that dropper wire. So there's only one dropper wire here. So now this offending bit of track can come out. Well the idea of what I'm doing is to replace this diamond crossing that was on the layout with the double slip. Because I got fed up of uh, train stalling on, on the diamond crossing and I cleaned the wheels and I cleaned the track and they were sparkling just like in the adverts. Sparkling clean and I still got stalling on this. I've got two other double slips on the layout. Never had a problem. Never a stall. Trains just glide over it effortlessly. So I thought, well, nothing to lose. Same geometry. Gives me a little bit of extra flexibility with changing of the points. And moving trains around the layout. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, um, the first thing they recommend, this is a Pico SL90. Um, they recommend that you wire it as though it is an electro frog by cutting the little wires that are underneath here by cutting them. I already did that with this diamond crossing but uh, I need to do that first. So we'll just persuade this little wire here to come up a bit and then to the best of our ability just snip I got it! It broke so that one's up now this one same again There we go. So now these two get twisted together and soldered and joined on to the wire which is going to take to the uh, point switch. Now there's a thing about double slips because I've done two others of these and I don't know what it is but the point motor that goes here um, when you connect the frog wire, it's the frog wire that comes from the other end. So I don't know what goes on, I don't really understand why, but that's what you do to make it work. So I'm going to do the bit of soldering then first. Okay, so I've done all my soldering. 
I did actually have a bit of a disaster while you weren't watching because one of the little bits of wire that I bent up snapped off so I had to solder on there you can hardly see it anyway it's going to be underneath the bridge so nobody will see it anyway but in terms of what's visible I thought I'd done pretty well there so those frogs are now wired separately and these wires have to go to the polarizing switch which may just be a switch on the point motor a PL11 I think they are or it might be the electronic one which is I'm going to, what I'm going to do now if I'm using the electronic one before I connect that to the decoder I just have to have an on off switch um, which I'm going to install because when I use the Railmaster Hornby Railmaster with an E-link um, if the point is in the wrong position when you switch off um, when you switch it back on again it short circuit and cuts out and won't even start so you need to be able to switch the frogs off and then you can start up get your points in the right position and then you can switch on so that's what I do that's why I've got this extra little switch here so now this will go onto the layout and we will have to wire up all the point motors and stuff another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I've got some paint which I've put on here look conductive paint and I'm going to paint the frog and make it electro frog well I might as well the only thing is the paint comes off use your track clean there just the trains running over it the paint wears away so you have to repaint it every now and again but it does work it is conductive I've checked it with a circuit tester so um, that's what I'm going to do once it goes onto the layout well the double slip is installed and if we look under here we have installed our point motors and this wire from the frog goes to the DCC decoder here via via this switch here which has a little LED on it when it's switched on so as I know so you switch it off before you switch on your e-link and then when everything's working you can switch it on which means then these it's only this little V bit of the track here and this little V bit of the track here the polarity changes according to the way the points go but it's all done electronically now one last thing about double slips I have double slips on the mimic a double slip might be here so we have a point there and a point there point there and a point there and that's the double slip there's also one here point there and point there now the way the mimic is set up we're looking at the diagram there and here's the track looking at the window so as I'm looking at it now the top of that diagram would be where the window is so when we look over at the double slips here I'm going to say this is the top this end is the top on the mimic this end is the bottom so this end is the top this end is the bottom now when you are putting the numbers in for your decoders if we look on the mimic again here I don't know how close we can get we can see this this is number 13 and this is number 14 I don't know if you can actually see that will it focus 
Probably not. Anyway, the lower one is 13 and the upper one is 14. Now when you are programming your decoders, so the upper one, this one, is the upper one. If you remember on the diagram, the upper one was 14. Well, when you're programming this in, you will program that one to be number 13. And the lower one, which was 13 on the diagram, you will tell your decoder, you will put the number in, 14 will be its address. That's the way it works. But uh, don't ask me to try and explain it, please. 